This next part discusses the evolution and the death of a sun-like star. I have a short flash movie which shows graphically what happens, but first I'll just discuss the main points. Then we'll show the movie, then we'll go over some details. So the main features in sun evolution. As soon as it reaches the main sequence stage, uh, the, it's the H burn, burning, the hydrogen burning stage. So hydrogen is burnt to helium, or fused to helium. Then, as it uses up the hydrogen, uh, there's less um, radiation pressure, and the core will contract and heat up. And then what happens then is that as that heats up, the outside of the star swells up and cools. So the star will become more luminous and it will become redder. And at that point it drifts off the main sequence. This coincides with the next part where the pressure on the inside of the core is so great and the temperature is great because the core has contracted that you will get helium burning. The helium will fuse to make larger nuclei and mostly it will make carbon. Uh, there will be a little bit of oxygen produced as well. Three helium nuclei will make uh, a carbon nucleus and, uh, and four will produce oxygen. So mostly carbon with a little bit of, of, um, of oxygen. And that's when it becomes a, a red giant. So when the helium is used up, the core contracts even more and heats up even more. That means that the um, the carbon could start to ignite but it's not going to because the temperature and the pressure are not high enough so there's no more um, um, escalated fusion inside the nucleus so there's no carbon burning in the, in the sun because it's too small the pressures are not great enough so what happens the outer shell of the star basically uh, drifts off into space and becomes what's known as a, a planetary nebula and what's left is the, the hot white star that's left which is not undergoing fusion anymore because all the hydrogen and the helium has been used up we have a ball of, of carbon um, which is not able to collapse even more the atoms are not able to push into each other because you have this quality called electron degeneracy that means that atoms cannot be crushed into each other and that basically supports the star that's left so we, um, so you don't have any further collapse. We just have electron degeneracy, and that stops the what's left collapsing even further. So that's when we end up with this white dwarf. So here's the graphic. Here's the sun, a low mass star, with some um, planets. The helium hydrogen is used up. Then it starts to contract. The outside will expand. and cool. But because the sun expands, the, the sun becomes so bright it's going to uh, heat up uh, the earth. We won't be able to live here anymore. So this is the end of the, the hydrogen fusion stage and then we're going to st proceed to the helium burning stage. Then we have a boss called a red giant. So the hydrogen turns into helium, the hydrogen, to, uh, helium turns into hydrogen. And then it, the pressure will be so great, but it's not enough to pr produce a carbon fusion. Then the outside just drifts up into space, and we're left with a planetary nebula and the white dwarf at the center. So, with time it will go darker and darker, and it will die. Inside the star, what's happening? It's full of hydrogen, and hydrogen changes into helium. It's fused into helium. So the gravity is squeezing the core, high pressures and temperatures.
um, the radiation pressure balances the weight of the shell of the star. Inside the core, which is the center part of the sun, we have hydrogen nuclei combining. Uh, this is deuterium. Then we have um, our light helium. Two light heliums combine, make a, a regular he helium and two protons. This is the nuclear fusion. This is the hydrogen burning part of the, the life of the star when it's on the main sequence. The helium that's produced sinks to the center and then that helium core builds up with time. As the hydrogen gets used up, the, the, um, the pressure is still high, but the helium gets bigger. So the outer shell is the hydrogen burner burning, the inner shell is helium. Then as the hydrogen gets used up, it contracts, the outer layers expand and the temperature of the helium will increase because of the high pressure and temperature. Then when it's a hundred million degrees Kelvin, then the helium will start to ignite. Then it, when the helium fusion begins, that's when it becomes a, a red giant. So here we, we produce carbon with maybe a little bit of oxygen as well. The carbon now sinks to the center. So now we have shells of carbon, helium and hydrogen the carbon builds up, there's the hydrogen burning, the helium burning, and then the carbon core. Then the hydrogen and the helium is starting to be used up. As this, the rate slows, the less radiation pressure, gravity will start to crush the center of the star, start to crush the core. But it's not enough to make the carbon burn. So the electrons in the core become tightly packed and they do not allow it any further contraction. So this is the electron degeneracy. The outside of the star just drifts off into space. And what's left is the white dwarf. And the planetary nebula, which is what was left of the outside of the star. So when the sun is on the, the main sequence, uh, when the helium hydrogen is used up, it drifts off into this, um, this branch, this giant branch here. Um, and then it will go to be a, um, a red giant, when, and that's when the helium burning will start. To start with, we have a hydrogen burning core. Um, and then with time, this is the... the hydrogen burning part here and the helium core and the uh, atmosphere will start to expand. So the core contracts, the sun expands, the surface temperature drops, the luminosity increases because of the, of the greater area and the sun becomes a red giant. The temperature will be roughly 3500 Kelvin and it will be, the radius will be half an astronomical unit and it will be 2000 brighter 2000, 2,000 times brighter than it is now. Helium created um, goes to the core and the core will contract. Eventually the core temperature will rise and you will get helium fusion and the fusion will produce carbon and oxygen. When helium has been used up the core contracts even further and then you get into the second red giant phase. So we get helium burning in the outer layers uh, then the, the sun will expand and engulf the earth and it will be 10,000 times brighter than it is now. Um, in the second stage, uh, the, the outer shell will be ejected into space. Then the core will be exposed, so you will be left with the core, which is the white core, the white dwarf it will become. It's 100,000 Kelvin. And, um, and the outside will glow because of the energy from the core and it becomes a planetary nebula. The radius of the core is about that of the Earth, but there's no more nuclear fusion going on, so it will just cool down with time, and then it becomes a white dwarf. Eventually a black dwarf when, it, when it's finished, but it will take the age of the universe to do, for that to happen. This 
is uh, the white dwarf is here. This is the planetary nebula. This is what was left of the outside part of the shell of the star. But notice that it's glowing basically because it's given the energy from the radiation from the the white dwarf. And here we have a, um, a, a graphic showing the aging of the star. We're about here at the moment. Eventually, we will become a red giant, becomes a planetary nebula, and a white dwarf is left. And here we have it becomes a red giant, and then the second stage, the double shell burning red giant, and then it suddenly it goes from there across to there and down there very quickly because as soon as it as it uh, ejects the outer atmosphere of the star, what's left is a white core which is not very luminous. So it comes down. It's also going to be white, so it's going to be come down to here very quickly, and then with time it will drift this way as it cools down. One important thing is that it will not contract any further. The temperature is not enough to make carbon fuse. And you have this effect called electron degeneracy, which means that uh, the atoms cannot be crushed enough to, for um, it to become anything else. So the electrons can't be packed any closer. The atoms can't be packed any closer. The electron pressure can stop the further collapse of the star. So that's going to happen in the sun. Um, and it will become a stable white dwarf only if the mass of the core is less than 1.4 solar masses. So if what's left after the shell has drifted into space is less than 1.4 solar masses, you will get a white dwarf. This is the, uh, the, San the Chandrasekhar limit. If you have um, a mass of the star which is left after the the atmosphere is drifted, drifted into space, which is greater than this, then it will have another outcome. And this is the, the Chandrasekhar limit. If the mass of the core is greater than 1.4 solar masses, the star will become a neutron star or black hole. The reason for this is that it will be crushed so much that the, at this um, electron degeneracy rule in physics will not be respected. The atoms will be basically crushed into each other and you will get um, solid neutrons that will just fuse together. And this is a very much more dramatic um, ending to the core of the star. So this, if it's greater than 1.4 solar masses, electron degeneracy is not respected. Another word for it is that the, the Pauli's exclusion principle. And um, you will just get solid neutrons in, in the core, or in, a, in an extreme case, a black hole. So the fate of stars. The fate of the star depends on, on its initial mass. So if the mass is less than 8 solar masses, it will become a white dwarf, basically because 60% is ejected. You're less left with less than 1.4 solar masses. So that will become a white dwarf. However, um, in the upper range of this, between 4 and 8 solar masses, um, the temperature is high enough to produce carbon as a uh, sun, but then also the carbon will fuse to produce ne neon, sodium, magnesium and oxygen in the final red giant phase because the temperatures are greater than those that will, that will ever exist in the sun because the, these stars are much more massive than, than the sun. 